we have and uh, be able to communicate. Am I on? Okay, there we go. Uh, be able to try doing Q&A after the message if because uh, we know at times there are questions that pop up as as uh, someone is preaching, maybe a particular term or a theological question. And then, of course, there are, you know, the situation and events going on and, uh, around this world and in our community. And so I know many people have questions along those lines. So we thought what we would do uh, while we're doing our online live streaming is maybe at the end of each sermon, um, if there's enough interest, we will have a short Q&A time, address questions from you. And this is a great way, too, for you to communicate things maybe that we as elders need to discuss that we're not aware of, as Kempis mentioned. But... Um, so we've already got several questions that come in, and uh, I'm the divine keeper of the questions. Or, <laughs> so God has appointed me to determine what is most important to discuss here. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let me just again offer a time, just a brief prayer, just that God will bless our time and we would be accurate. And Lord, again, thank you for the opportunity you've given us, uh, Lord, to have your word. Thank you for the wonderful message, Lord, that we just heard from Mark. and the glory of Christ being revealed in such a powerful and unique way. Um, Lord, I pray that as we uh, talk now, as we address some of the questions here from those in our congregation, that, Lord, you would give us wisdom from your word, that we would only say what is true and accurate, that we would be clear and helpful. We pray this in Christ's name and for his glory. Amen. All right, our first question actually came from somebody who's six years old, and... Uh, was curious, you mentioned the word divine, Kempis, in your sermon, and so this person asked, what does mm -hmm. divine mean? So maybe if you could give a yeah. short definition for our younger folks as well, they could be able to track. Divi that Jesus is divine means that Jesus is God. That Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. came from the word div divinus, from Latin, meaning godlike, I think, <laughs> if I remember correctly. But uh, Okay, so that was an easy question. That's a great question. Yeah, great I question. thought it was great. It's great having our younger folks being attentive mm -hmm. and thinking about mm -hmm. that. So thank you very much for your question. Mm -hmm. All right, our next question is coming soon. Here we go. Are there any particular passages, I really like this question, that you have meditated on for comfort in the midst mm -hmm. of this crisis? This is a great question. Anything that come to your guys' mind that have been helpful for you or just as you've counseled others? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple. I mean, just kind of thinking through um, and processing. I think, you know, one of the ones that comes to mind is, is found in Matthew chapter 6, um, kind of talking about the, you know, anxiety and being anxious. And I could just read it all the way through because I think it's... Uh, a great passage and a great reminder for us all uh, in the midst of uncertainties and, and difficulties. Um, it says, picking it up in, in Matthew 6, 25, it says, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. You do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they. And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And then we're going to close here in verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And I think that's just a, a good reminder for me that, you know, God's got this. He's not surprised. He's not shocked by it. And he doesn't call us to be anxious. He doesn't want us running around fretting. I mean, certainly we're all human. We all have our propensities. Some of us maybe have more of a propensity to worry than others. But I think this is just a great verse to kind of refocus our minds and, and take our thoughts captive, as it were, and to think on those things that are right, true, pure, and lovely, that God cares for the animals, and we are of far more value to God than even the animals mm -hmm. of his creation, and therefore we can take great courage in the fact that he's got us. And that's a passage that has just always ministered to me whenever I feel anxious or start fretting, just a good reminder that 
God's got it, and I just need to come back to him and to his kingdom and to his righteousness and, and trust that he's, he's in complete control of everything. So that's a verse that's ministered to me. There's many others, but I'll give you guys a chance to throw some more. Yeah. Tempest, one that comes to your mind. <clears throat> There's been a number of them, but think about 1 Corinthians 15. It's been huge. <clears> 1 <throat> Corinthians 15 is all about the resurrection of Christ, as, as you guys know. And then he gets to 1 Corinthians 15, 58, where he says, <clears throat> Therefore, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your work and toil in the, um, is not vain in the Lord. Let me read it. <clears throat> it's better. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. That's in good times or bad times, right? And um, I love that because it just reminds us of the fact that our hope, we can only say this and, and live this way by the grace of God and because of the hope that we have in our risen, exalted Christ, which was all about what the message was about. Huge. Good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just maybe a couple short ones, just ones that might be easier to memorize. Psalm 46, one is one that uh, has been particular help to me over the years where it's God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And that, mm. that word very present, it's the idea of always consistently, constantly there. Um, even though he may, not, he may not feel that he's there, he is. And that's a promise from scripture that I found great encouragement in. Another one's Romans 8, 28, 29, of course, right? God causes all things mm. to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And there we see the sovereign hand of God. He causes all things to work together for good. Um, that good ultimately, as he says in the next verse, is conformity mm. to the image of Christ. So mm. those are two short verses that you know, I've memorized and called to mind. So I appreciate the question. That's a great one. We always need to be pointing ourselves to Scripture and letting God speak to us, especially in times where we're struggling, um, trials, difficulties, or anxious, as you mentioned. Yeah. Can I throw one more short one in there? It's, it's found sure, in Brock, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that's how I roll. Second uh, Timothy, um, verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, just says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. And I've always appreciated that verse because, again, the timidity is kind of fear. And I think we see a lot of fear around us right now. And, and again, that's not from God. Um, as believers, this isn't the spirit that God has put in us. He's put in a spirit that uh, gives us the ability to love and to um, have this discipline to do the things that he calls us to do. And, and again, that's just a good reminder for us because, again, God has pulled us out of this darkness and he's brought us into the light, into the kingdom of his beloved son. And therefore, this isn't it for us. We have something far greater to look forward to. And God's spirit dwells in us to remind us of these things and to empower us to live differently, even in the midst of, of uncertainty in this particular crisis. So again, that's a, a nice short verse that we can kind of come back to and to remind us that whenever we're feeling fearful, that's not from God. That's not the spirit that God has given us. He's, he's given us something far greater uh, to remind us of who he is and what we have to look forward to. So. Very good. Um, okay, a lot of questions are popping in now, so I'm sorry if we won't, aren't able to get to all of them, but we'll do our best. Um, uh, good question here. Um, on uh, regarding uh, senior saints. So if you could pop, uh, I think, a couple questions from the one you have there. Uh, this question is, uh, is there a resource for collecting, uh, for collecting needs of older saints? Put another way, are, are there needs being proactively sought out and related to the body? I think this is a really good question, important question, especially for our senior saints here. So mm -hmm. if you guys have some thoughts on that in particular. Well, there are a couple of really helpful things happening right now. Um, I think one is more organic based upon um, <clears throat> just us leveraging the, the shepherding hubs that we already had as a church. And what I mean by that is the fellowship groups, the men's and women's small groups, um, bigger and smaller. So a lot of what's happening right now organically uh, through those, even if it's virtually, um, it's, uh, people are just caring and reaching out in that way, particularly for, to older saints. I've, I've heard a lot of activity, people calling older saints, um, just because they happen to be in those Bible studies or they were a part of visitation. But then there's a second thing that we as elders um, have been um, doing, and I think others in the body have. Um, I know um, Ruth spent a lot of time this past week specifically calling um, our senior saints. Um, we um, spearheaded efforts just to get others reaching out specifically to our older uh, saints to make sure that they're being cared for. 
um, uh, whether spiritually or physically. So some of that is happening. I'm very thankful to say that. You know. Yeah, I think there's things in place, <clears throat> pardon me, where we're, we're trying to reach out to them. But I, I think, again, I would just challenge everybody in the body. You know, we all know certain senior saints. You don't need to know all of them, but we all know certain senior saints that God has brought across our paths. And uh, if you're aware of them, I think it's just a great opportunity to reach out, check in, see how they're doing, see if they need some groceries, see if there's anything you can kind of do to help them. Obviously, you want to limit touches. So we don't want to kind of do as much as uh, we don't want to do anything to kind of, uh, especially if you're younger and can be a carrier of this. You don't want to do anything to kind of bring that upon them, but you can certainly look for ways to bless the older saints and to kind of, again, be checking in with them, giving them a phone call, um, dropping off some groceries at their home or whatever, but looking for things like that to do. I, I think all of us know of certain senior saints, and I would just challenge us all to make sure that we, we don't just sit around and think that they'll be taken care of, but actually reach out to them and, and check in with them ourselves specifically. Yeah, that's, I think it's really good just being proactive on our part mm -hmm. and also for those of you um, you know more mature senior saints watching right now uh, I would encourage you to let your needs be known so if you get that call don't say everything's fine if it isn't if, if you need some help just ask it's not a burden don't feel like you're being a, a drain on resources here or mm -hmm. bothering someone else just just let them know hey I need some help getting some grocery I need some help fixing this thing whatever it is um, just do that and and I think just even being sensitive, everyone in the body, just let your needs known to one another. I know we, we tend to kind of, I was talking to someone this week that was saying, you know, we just, we don't want to be a burden. We don't want to, so just, brother, just, just let people know. And, uh, or if you're not comfortable letting someone else know, you're welcome always to call any, any one of us here uh, and let us know. We, we want to make sure you're being helped. There's a similar question, um, how can we serve the church? So, if you could type that on, Spencer. How can we serve the church without physically being there? Uh, how can we serve the church without physically being there? Uh, that's a related question. I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that one goes back. <clears throat> Obviously, there are physical... You're wanting like, home-cooked meals. And, yeah, and, right? yeah, yeah. Some ways you guys you... have some uh, favorite stews that you want to bring over to the Hernandez? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know... That goes back to kind of our, our understanding of what the church is. The church are the people of God, right? So, yeah, there are some physical things that you can do for the building structure. Um, here, our church building, our physical building. But the church are the people of God. So the best way that you can serve the church while not physically being here is to be doing exactly what Pastor Carnes and, and Pastor Brock just encouraged us. Just meeting needs, reaching out, checking in with one another, praying for one another. That is serving the church serving the people of God. Mm. Yeah, and I would just echo that. I think uh, prayer is, is a key component for us right now. I mean, again, we can't uh, obviously um, physically be in, in, um, in contact with one another. We're trying to limit that as much as possible during these times. So I think there's certainly much that we can do to be praying for one another. Again, phone calls, FaceTimes, we have so much technology of us that... Uh, I think there's so much we can be doing to check in within the body. And, and this isn't just something that's for the, uh, the elders and the deacons and everybody in leadership. But this is what it is to be in the body of Christ. We're all called to, you know, practice the one. And, and we, can't, we don't always have the opportunity to do that physically. But again, there's a lot that we can do to, again, just reach out and be an encouragement. You can write notes, uh, send an email, um, Facebook book post, whatever, just things to encourage people and to uh, just keep people abreast of what's going on and things that are happening. I, I think, again, we, we live in a unique time where um, we can get information out, and I think we just need to kind of capitalize on that and utilize that, but, but be praying for one another and, and just be caring for one another and to make sure that nobody falls through. We all, all are reaching our sphere of influence and, and doing what we can to uh, reach out to people and, and, and just know that we're thinking about them and, and praying for them and, and concerned for them. So. I think you bring up a helpful point to remember. By the way, these things originally were designed to be phones. Uh, <laughs> so I know we don't use them that way anymore, but actually, you know, instead of just texting, just go through the church directory mm. or people in your small group or if you're involved in a ministry of Bible study and just call them. Mm. Hey, how's it going? Uh, 
you know, things I could be praying for for you. I mean, how's things going? I mean, just, just, you know, talk with one another beyond texting or, or those mm. kinds of things. Uh, mm. uh, it's a novel approach, I know, but, you know, <laughs> we used to do it that way in, in the old mm. days. But uh, just encourage you. I've been doing that this week with folks, and it's been mm. great, and it's made me realize just how little I mm. am doing that these mm. days. So that's an encouragement for you Can guys. Can I add something really quick? To yeah, sure. I think, wouldn't you guys say that I, w- I was talking in the message about expressing gratitude for the evidences of God's grace. You know, I've been just praising God for how much body life is happening, even in the face of what we're facing. And um, I don't know about you guys, but as elders, it's a joy to see God's people caring for each other. I mean, we can go on and on right now with example after example of how you guys are serving one another. And I think that is an evidence of God's grace that we can express gratitude for. Lord, thank you for the opportunity right now even in the face of this trial and things that we can't understand, that you are fostering um, a body life amongst us. We're living out Hebrews 10, you know? one little example, right? We got a text this week from a brother who was going through his library Mm -hmm. of books, you know, was asking us if we wanted any. And and I said, any any ones that you don't uh, get get rid of, you know, give take them, give them to me. I'll I'll take them overseas with me when I go. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of I know you know he's at home. He's going through his stuff, and mm. there's one little way to to serve the body of Christ, even at mm. large. Just Amen. be Amen. thinking that way. A related question. It's the one that just came in. Um, what are some ways we that we as members of the body of Christ can practically minister to the needs of others? Um, but here we've already talked about that a little bit. I want to cover the second part of this question. This is the second from the top, Spencer. How can we be a blessing and a witness in the community right now? Mm. I mean, going out, going out door to door may not be appreciated right now, but um, <laughs> like, what, what are some ways that we, because of the physical distancing and other things that we can be a blessing within mm-hmm. uh, our community and a witness there? Mm-hmm. Any thoughts? Well, I think just within your neighborhood, I mean, obviously we, we have our, our neighbors, we have people that we're coming in contact with, a lot of people are, are home, doing stuff from home, and mm-hmm. again, we want to limit touches, um, but we also, again, want to look for opportunities to be able to interact with neighbors. I've had a lot of conversations with neighbors that have, you know, just, they're at home right now, and it's a great opportunity to be able to engage them, so I think, you know, looking for those, not just kind of peeking out from your windows and <laughs> saying, oh, there's people out there, I can't go out there. <laughs> you know, keep your social distance, do whatever you need to do, but, uh, you know, just try to interact with the, the, your neighbors. They're, they're around, build some relationships, mm. um, you know, try to, try to minister to them. If you've got extra rolls of toilet paper, those are like gold. Oh, you know? no, no. <laughs> Don't share your toilet paper. Yeah, sorry. Um, but, you know, a- anything that you can do to just be a blessing, I think just to be a good neighbor, I think, you know, it's hard right now because we are so limited on things that we can actually do. Um, mm. You know, as far as just going and, and doing a lot of stuff, we're, we're, we're limited. We're supposed to be kind of cutting back on that. So we want to be careful. But on the flip side, there are some things that we can do. And they may be as simple as just, again, engaging a neighbor and, and talking with them and, and just checking in with them, too, and seeing mm-hmm. how they're doing. If there's, they're in need of anything. If, you know, you might have some elderly neighbors. And mm-hmm. can, how can you, as a family minister to them and reach out to them. I think there's, there's so much we can do, but again, we are limited and we have to respect those limitations, but I think we have to also just kind of think about, you know, it doesn't have to be overly complex. It can just be really just mm-hmm. kind of reaching out and, and taking advantage of the fact that a lot of people are around right now and we can at least engage them socially uh, mm-hmm. distance-wise. So That's yeah. one thing I've noticed, you know, T- Tina and I go on walks a lot and we've seen a lot more people out actually mm-hmm. walking around People in our neighborhood I've never seen before. Mm-hmm. That so we just stop. Hello, you know, mm-hmm. how's it going? You know, smile. Um, so yeah, I've actually seen a lot of neighbors engaged in conversation. You know, more than six feet apart. But um, so it's actually promoted some opportunities to get to know people that normally might not be outside. So it's kind of interesting. What's really good and non-threatening, oftentimes too, is just asking them how you can pray for them. Um, the other day I saw. Um, we, to our right and to our left, we have elderly people that live there. And um, just from a distance, I just asked a couple of questions from these ladies and just asked them how I could be, we could be praying for them as a family. And it's amazing. Hardly, whenever I ask that, I hardly ever get um, people getting upset about that. You know, they want you to pray for them. And sometimes that really provides some great opportunities. So that's a way to mm. encourage that. That's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Pastor Kempis, I have a couple mm -hmm. questions related to your mm -hmm. sermon. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one um, uh, is, was the glory Jesus displayed in our passage today different than the glory he will display in his coming kingdom? If so, in what way? Was the glory Jesus displayed in our passage today different than the glory he will display in his coming kingdom? Mm. I'm thinking, right, as he's... Mm -hmm, Perhaps mm -hmm. on the great white horse, on the, the white horse coming down, mm -hmm. second coming, mm -hmm. reigning from the throne. Sure. You see any distinctions there? It'll be mm -hmm. the same. Yeah, obviously, um, what we saw today was just a sneak peek. We kept saying that, just a preview of just a small percentage of that glory. And it's hard to quantify that, right? You have a God who is infinite in glory, endless, matchless, incomparable. Um, then the other side to that is what Pastor Tim just mentioned. One day he's going to come revealing himself quite different, isn't he? He's going to come in obviously judging his enemies, delivering the final death blow to those who have rejected him and haven't put their trust in him. And so there is that sense and that will be his glory being manifested, namely his justice um, against sin and rebellion for those who haven't trusted in him as Lord and Savior. So I would say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A similar one, um, it's also on the passage, is, let's see, it's about five down, Spencer. In verse three of Mark eight, or is that for Mark nine, his radiant was shown, why did those apostles not die because of his radiant uh, being revealed? I, I think this is related to, you know, it says no one can see face of God and, and live, you know, Moses mm -hmm. was hid behind the rock as, mm -hmm. as God passed by. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to be that type of question. Um, his radiant was shown. Why did those apostles not die? Because his radiance was revealed. Well, obviously Christ allowed them, right, in his wisdom and his design for that, that moment of transfiguration. Jesus designed that moment to be a moment where he is giving them enough of a glimpse of who he is so that they are not instantly, instantly pulverized, obviously. But if they would see the fullness of Christ's glory, obviously they weren't, as imperfect creatures, they're not able to do that. So I think, um, obviously, this was the design of Christ, but um, can we see the fullness of God's glory and live? Obviously, one day we will see him as he is, but that's because we're, we're going to be perfected, and we will be like him, right? We shall see him as he is. I think it says in 1 John. So... It just goes back to that idea of um, this is just a, a, um, a small glimpse being shown to them of who Christ is. Yep. Yeah, I can add on to that yeah, a little right. bit. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, it, uh, it says this, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I have also have been fully known. And I think, again, we get an opportunity to realize that you know, everything here on earth is, is muted, it's, it's, it's dim. We don't have the full manifestation of, of everything, but a day is coming uh, when that will be and we will see Jesus face to face in all of his full uh, glory. And again, I think what the, um, what the, the disciples got was a, a glimpse greater than what was previously there, but not, again, the full picture because I think that is still to be revealed and that is still something to come and so you know right now we see in part but a day is coming when we will see fully and we'll be equipped to see fully to to not uh, perish from that mm -hmm. okay here's a, a practical question um, very practical how do I deal with an employer who remains open during this time and demands me to go to work when I don't feel that it is safe for me or my family up on the screen too. How do I deal with an employer who, reminds me, who remains open during this time and mm -hmm. demands me to go to work when I don't feel that it's safe for me or my family? Mm -hmm. That's an easy one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question and you know what? Um, obviously we've all been on staff for a few years, these, these brothers longer than I have, but I can kind of identify with that a little bit having worked in the secular world. Um, this is obviously very unique and uncharted for most of us, um, I would say, first of all, I mean, are you breaking the law by being there? Um, and obviously, you need to look into that specifically. If you are not breaking the law 
by being there and your employer is not asking you to be working there um, against the governing authorities, then obviously that's a conversation that I would have with him and just or her and just express that. But ultimately, I think um, just taking the necessary precautions um, and care um, that you need to take to be able to still work and do that well is unto the Lord. Um, um, protecting yourself and protecting your family is maybe the way to go, but every situation is unique. We would have to almost have a conversation to be able to discern that together. Discern that, not discern. Notice that. <laughs> so there's an ongoing debate still about that, <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, I think that's a tough one. Um, I mean, ultimately, I think we do have to take a look if, if we're being asked to sin, then obviously we wouldn't do that if we're being asked to break the law, like mm-hmm. Pastor Kempis was referring to. But, you know, I, I think at the, at the end of the day, we want to respect those that are in authority over us. We want to um, be good employees and we want to do everything that we can. But I think, you know, if you have to go in, um, then again, you make sure that you take all the precautions that you you need to. Uh, there, there are a lot of people that are being affected that would love to work but aren't being able to. Um, so again, we have to take all of those things into consideration. Obviously, you do everything you can to keep yourself safe, to keep anybody you may be seeing safe, keep your family safe. Um, but if you're being asked to come in, um, and again, there's no law that is being broken, there's no martial law that's been put into effect, then I think you need to kind of do that. But Take, take all of your necessary precautions so it's not put anybody at, at risk. Mm. Tough one, though. Very yeah, difficult. I mean, if, you know, being aware of what is being mm. mandated right now, and one of them is if anyone in your family or in your home is mm-hmm. sick with the virus, you have to stay home. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, this is a challenge dealing with authority. Um, you can, I think, appeal. And just, I, I can't remember, Kempis, if you mentioned that, just talk to your boss and appeal. Express your concerns. If he or she still says, well, you have to come in, it's still your choice if you want to stay home, but you'll have to deal with the consequences that come with that. And, um, but I think, you know, respecting what your boss is wanting you to do is important. But there are times where we might consider, you know, that there is particular issues with uh, the home or the family, and you're, you're going to have to, you know, if you're going to let your boss know, well, it's, that's just not something I don't think I can do. Um, you know, what should I do at this point? I just don't feel it's safe for me to come. Um, work that out with your boss in a gracious way, in a respectful way, uh, in an appealing way. Don't make demands or um, assertions. Um, but, you know, every situation's a little, a little different in that regard. So um, these are just some general mm-hmm. thoughts that we have on that. It's, it's a really important and good question. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just have time for one more quickly. We've got a couple minutes before. Uh, let me see. Um, who is the lottery winner here? Uh, <laughs> this is tough trying to pick. <laughs> Maybe I'll use up my two minutes just trying to find a good question here. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. <laughs> I think I'm going to ask it. Um, <laughs> can you address those? And I actually recognize the phone number, but I won't say who this is. <laughs> we see you. Can you address those who feel like they need to purchase guns to protect themselves during this time of panic? <laughs> That's a simple little answer. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed. A lot of people have been gathering around Gun World here in Burbank and other places mm-hmm. and purchasing um, ammunition and guns, partly because there's the concern that there will be a drop mm-hmm. in supply, but... That's not a com- comforting no. picture, is it? Mm. You guys have any thoughts? You had to pick that one for the very last <laughs> one. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> we want to have a bank. We want people to come and show up next week, see what happens. So. Wow. I mean, it kind of gets into the issue of what's appropriate as far as defending yourself, what's appropriate as far as, I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. connected to this. I mean, that I think, maybe I think we can think about this week and come back with this next mm-hmm. week if you want to give a more thoughtful answer. Well, I mean, I think a quick answer. I mean, certainly we, we can defend ourselves, but, you know, I, I think as Christians, if we're using our guns to protect our food supply or our water supply, <laughs> that's probably not the, the thing that we would want to be yeah. doing as believers. I mean, we want to be as gracious as we can and 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 even to our own hurt sometimes but you know that's a that's a difficult question because I mean we certainly have the right 
to bear arms here in America. Um, but just because we have the right to do something doesn't mean that we need to or have to. Um, I would kind of defer to somebody's conscience as to whether or not they feel like that's a necessary thing for them. But again, just I would challenge you to examine your heart and ask yourself, why do I want that? What's, what's kind of the overriding mm -hmm. uh, issue behind me having that gun? Am I, is my trust ultimately in the gun? And am I using that for my own selfish protection? Or am I ultimately trusting the Lord and trying to do things in a way that are going to point people to him rather than just protect myself? Um, mm -hmm. tough, mm -hmm. tough question, though. That's mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of layers to that, I, I, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think, too, it just if a person can say in their heart that they do trust in the sovereign hand of God, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's obviously a need to protect ourselves. That, you know, there are certain evil people in this world, yeah. um, and the, the law does allow for that. Yeah. So th there are several things come into play here. But uh, the thing I would want to make sure of, though, is that that person that you're talking to about this is, is there an underlying rest and confidence in the good sovereign hand of God? And that something like that would definitely be a, a mm. final, last mm -hmm. resort. You know, Jesus did say, turn the other cheek. And so that doesn't mean just let yourself and your family be killed mm -hmm. or harmed. But we do have to keep that in mind as far as an attitude of our own hearts. That mm -hmm. it's not a me first mentality. And so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's, like you said, many layers, many scenarios that this could cover. But I, I think, again, it's a good question to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. So with that... Static, I'm, that probably means we just got cut <laughs> off and they just said we're done. So a uh, lot of questions we weren't able to get to. Maybe we can hold some of them over for next week um, and try to answer as many as we can. Thank you so much for, uh, for these questions. Many of them are very well thought through and, and uh, hopefully we've provided at least some insight for you guys. And we'll try this again next week and see how, how things go. Let me go ahead and close our time in prayer today. Oh, Lord, we are so thankful that you did send your son. And it was clear from our passage today, so clear that this is no ordinary man, that he is, in fact, divine, that he is, in fact, um, of the same essence as you, Father, and the same essence as the Spirit. And, Lord, that uh, he even gave a glimpse of the glory of God uh, to his disciples and and even at the resurrection, Lord, that we see his glory as well and manifested in a different way, uh, the glory of his mercy and grace and justice and love and holiness all at the cross. Lord, I pray for uh, just all of our beloved brothers and sisters, Calvary, uh, Lord, just this week that we've talked a lot about ways to encourage one another, ways to be a testimony in our community ways to help others who may have struggles and needs at this time. Lord, may you move us to be proactive this week and look for opportunities, Lord, to be in one another's lives in ways that we can, even in the midst of the restrictions. And Lord, that we would not waste, Lord, the opportunities. Lord, I just remember John Piper stuck in my head when he had cancer. He said, don't waste your cancer. Uh, Lord, let us not waste this virus and the ways that it is uh, moving us to have to uh, interact with each other in different ways. We do pray, Lord, for our community. We pray for uh, this world uh, that is many are in fear. We pray, Lord, that the gospel would be magnified, that your son would be lifted up even in the midst of all this, that people would come to recognize that, uh, Lord, that, that they don't have any control over their lives and that you, Lord, are the one that all of us will answer to one day. And Lord, I just pray you would use this time, Lord, to... Um, expand your kingdom to reveal your glory and, and use your people in that way. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Right. The proceeding was a sermon from Calvary Bible Church in Burbank, California. To learn more, visit calvarybiblechurch.org. All scripture quotations from the New American Standard Bible are copyrighted by the Lockman Foundation.